All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, We had offered the trust to the heavens, the earth, the mountains, and they refused to bear it, because they were afraid of it. But man bore it. He surely proved unjust and ignorant. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, his companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. The Almighty Allah has honored man as he created him with his hands, breathed his spirit into him, ordered the angels to, to bow down before him, and favored him with many things. These things include bear bearing the divine responsibility and the divine obligations. Every man, as long as he is mature and sane, is responsible before Allah, regardless of his position in the society. Everyone is responsible within his capacity and the duties assigned to them. It goes without saying that assuming possession of authority is a responsibility and burden, not a stature. If a person deals with it just from the perspective of being a stature, he will be overwhelmed by its consequences. However, when a person looks at assuming responsibility from the perspective of being a burden and a mission, he will get support from the Almighty Allah. Concerning this point, our Prophet, peace be upon him, once said to Abdurrahman ibn Samura, Do not ask for a position of authority, for if you are granted this position as a result of your asking for it, you will be left alone without God's help. And if you are granted it without making any request for it, you will be helped by God. Abu Dhar also reported that he said to, to the Messenger of Allah, Why do you not appoint me to an official position? He said that the Prophet patted him on the shoulder with his hand and said, O oh, Abu Dhar, you are a weak man, and it is a trust, and uh, it will be a cause of disgrace and remorse on the Day of Judgment except for the one who takes it up with a full sense of responsibility and fulfills what's entrusted to him. Responsibility has many forms, and these include responsibility towards family. Indeed, family plays a great role in the stability and cohesion of the entire society. It is the core of the society and its first defensive line. Parents are the ones responsible before Allah for the cohesion and stability of the family through fulfilling their duties. Islam set out these duties and specified the responsibilities of every member of the family. The Prophet peace be upon him said, every one of you is a guardian and every one of you is responsible for his dependence. A ruler is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. A man is a guardian of his family and is responsible for them. A wife is a guardian of her husband's house and she is responsible for it. A slave is a guardian of his master's property and he is responsible for that. Beware, all of you are guardians and are responsible for your dependents. The success and stability of the family are based on the performance of rights and responsibilities by each member, and the avoidance of any negligence. Duties among the members or of the family are mutual and reciprocal. Each member has to perform his duties with love, affection, and honesty. One who neglects his duties shall be held accountable before the Almighty Allah, who will question him 
whether he was observant or negligent of these duties. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Indeed Allah will question every person about his responsibilities and the duties assigned to him. Had he been observant or negligent, even Allah will ask man about his family. The Prophet also says, Neglecting one's own dependence is an enough reason for man to be held sinful. Another type of responsibility is the responsibility towards one's profession. In this case, the greater is the position entrusted to a person, the bigger his responsibility will be. Furthermore, the wider is the scope of this responsibility, the more are the qualifications demanded. <coughs> the most important qualifications in, these, in this regard are competence, experience, honesty, as well as the ability to perform the requirements of this responsibility. As such, person will be held accountable before him and before people and before Allah who will question him about his authority. The Prophet peace be upon him says, he who assumes an authority over ten persons or more will come before Allah on the day of judgment with his hands chained to his neck. It is then either his fulfillment of his duties will free him or that his sin will destroy him. Anyone who assumes an authority over people or assumes any possession must realize that he has to do well. He has to, to fear Allah and realize the inviolability of public money. So, he needs to act according to the limits of his job and avoid taking unlawful earnings under any name. Meanwhile, we stress that an official should not show indifference nor pays no attention to observing all details of his work, even the slightest ones. Neglecting something which seems trivial may, may lead to dangerous consequences. It is necessary to understand that to trust people doesn't mean to stop monitoring their work. And monitoring people's work doesn't mean the lack of trust. Also, every official within the capacity of his responsibilities is required to choose reliable and honest assistance. He has to choose the most competent and efficient. If an official is appointed as a leader of a group of people, while there is someone who is more competent, then he is unfaithful to Allah, to his messenger, to his nation, and even to the responsibility he bears. Another form of responsibility is the social responsibility. Islam has established societal norms through which people can enjoy a secure and a stable life. On the basis of equality among all human beings so that, so that the society as a whole becomes like one body. An observer of people's life will see the poor who lacks what fulfills his hunger, the patient who lacks medicine and, will see, and he will also see the widows, the orphans and the weak who have no one to care for them. To fulfill the needs of such people is a social, religious and a national responsibility and even a collective obligation. But if all people neglect it, they will be sinful. The Prophet peace be upon him said, he is not a believer who spends his night with a full stomach while his neighbor is hungry and he knows about him. The Prophet, the Prophet peace be upon him has shown great care to this social responsibility and to the extent that he declared that fulfilling people's needs is given priority over performing atikaf in his mosque. In this regard, 
Abu Sa'id Al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, While we were traveling along with the Prophet, peace be upon him, a man, a man came to him on his she camel and began to ride it to the right and to the left. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, He who has a spear riding beast should give it to him who has no riding beast. And he who has surplus equipment should give it to him who has no surplus equipment. Abu Sa'id al Khudraisi said, We thought that none of us had a right in surplus property. <coughs> the Prophet also said, The most beloved people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to people. The most beloved deed to Allah is to make a Muslim happy, or to relieve one of his troubles, or to forgive his debt, or to feed his hunger. <sighs> he also said that I walk with a brother to fulfill his need is more beloved to me that I seclude myself in this mosque in Medina for a month. Whoever swallows his anger, then Allah will have his faults concealed. Whoever suppresses his rage, even though he could fulfill his anger if he wished, then Allah will secure his heart on the day of resurrection. Whoever walks with his brother to fulfill, to fulfill his needs until he secures it, them for him, then Allah the Exalted will make his footing firm across the bridge on the day when the footings are shaken. The Prophet peace be upon him was also keen on following his companions on this point to assure that they used to fulfill each other's needs. It is reported that he peace be upon him once said who amongst you is fasting today? Abu Bakr said, I am. He again said, Who amongst you followed a funeral procession today? Abu Bakr said, I did. He again said, Who amongst you served food to the needy? Abu Bakr said, I did. He again said, Who amongst you today has visited a patient? Abu Bakr said, I did. Thereupon, the uh, messenger said, Anyone in whom are these good deeds combined will certainly enter paradise. National responsibility is one of the many various forms of responsibility. Our country has due rights upon us, and we shoulder a great responsibility towards it, so as to help it achieve progress and development. In this regard, the Prophet, peace be upon him, indicated his companions to sacrifice their souls and properties for their homeland and to safeguard it, declaring that this is jihad in the cause of Allah, a point which is crystal clear in the fact that Allah, the Almighty, has declared those who sacrifice their souls in defense of their religion and homeland are of a higher rank. He Most High says, Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. A promise which is binding on him in the Torah and in the Injil and the Quran. National responsibility requires that one should construct his country and make it a developed and advanced one. Through giving precedence to the public interest to his personal interest, through unification of efforts, casting off conflicts, avoidance of discord, and acting as if we all are one man. This is the true meaning of the saying of Allah and hold fast by the covenant of Allah all together and be not disunited and do not quarrel
for then you will be weak in hearts and you will your power will depart we all should be fully aware of the fact that a day will certainly come when we all be addressed with the saying of Allah and stop them for they shall be questioned also let us ponder over the saying of Allah the Almighty where he declares on that day you shall be exposed to a view no secrets of yours shall remain hidden be it a minor or a major sin a point which is proved by the saying of Allah the Almighty O oh my son surely if it is the very weight of the grain of a mustard seed even though it is in it it is in the heart of a rock or high above in the heaven or deep down in the earth Allah will bring it surely Allah is nor of subletters with that said I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped except Allah, and that our Prophet Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, his companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, Within few hours we shall receive one of the seasons of goodness, blessing and obedience. It is the blessed month of Shaban in which deeds are taken up to Allah Most High. Which is why Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him used to offer more acts of worship, of worship and obedience in it. For example, the Prophet used to fast most of the days of Shaban to the extent that his companions asked him about the reason behind that. Usama ibn Zaid, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, I do not you see I do not see you fasting in any month as much as you do in Chaban. He said, That's a month to which people do not pay attention because it is between Rajab and Ramadan. It is a month in which the deeds are taken up to the Lord of the worlds. And I like that my deeds be taken up when I am fasting. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, also reported. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to fast until one would say he never breaks his fast and he would abandon fasting at other times until one would say that he never fasts and I never saw the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him fast for a complete month except for the month of Ramadan and I never saw him fast in a month more than he did in the month of Shaban Furthermore, the month of Shaban has a blessed night at the middle of the month, in which Allah Most High looks at his slaves with compassion and mercy, and showers them with his forgiveness and the concealment of their sins. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah looks down on the night of the middle of Shaban and forgives all of his creation apart from the idolaters and the mushahin that is the gruge filled individual in another narration it is stated that Allah Most High looks at his slaves in the middle of Shaban and he forgives the believers and postpones the punishment of the dis disbelievers and, live, and leaves people of Gruj until they leave it. So we should take advantage of these blessed days in offering much obedience, offering more good deeds and getting closer to Allah. In accordance with the saying of the Prophet peace be upon him, 
where he says, Most surely your Lord has placed days within the year, so observe them, so that one of you may get some of their blessings and never goes astray thereafter. O oh Allah, help us keep remembrance of you, express gratitude to you, and worship you in the best manner.